Hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast. And you know what? This podcast is definitely one you want to watch on YouTube. I will be putting this video up so you can see where I'm at. This is going to be raw, really unedited. Um, just hang in there with me. Um, I thought this today was the best day I could possibly think of to do a podcast. I could have gotten it done this weekend uh, in my home, you know, where you normally see me sitting. But this place is so super special to me. I am up in Williams, Arizona at the Young Life Camp. And my son's high school, every fall, takes a week off right after Labor Day to come up here as an entire high school, freshman through senior. And with their staff and the teachers, and they just, um, they just enjoy being in nature, cooler weather, the pines, as you can see behind me, it's just gorgeous here. And over here we got some just it's just a beautiful beautiful quiet place and quite frankly I don't think I've ever been up this early and it being this quiet because usually there's several hundred kids mulling around talking playing sitting on that field there talking with each other playing soccer out over the field or the field house over here and they're playing some basketball going in there's a zip line that goes into this pond over here and a pool and a whirlpool and it doesn't even matter the temperature the kids don't care <laughs> it'll be 55 tonight which is a far cry from our you know 80s in the evenings down in Phoenix and so this is a special place to me now let me backtrack for those of you that have not seen me in a while or don't know where I come from I am an above knee amputee um, it's been two and a half years and my podcast is really trying to help others navigate life when they're going through problems. Uh, it started out more for amputees, but really the messages I'm hearing from people is my message can go for anybody dealing with any kind of issue, ailment, whatever it is. So uh, once again, I'm hoping to strive for that with this one, but I am putting the spin on it um, and directing this one and probably next week's to Phantom Pains. And I thought, you know what, if you don't know much about me, I think and I hope, at least what I've been told by people, is that my faith comes through with how I talk and I'm very transparent. So when I'm having issues, I don't hide it. I'm not looking for sympathy, but I want you to see the real me. That The fact that it isn't always me out skiing or surfing or hiking and everything's thumbs up awesome a lot of times that smile and that thumbs up or the shaka is hiding a, a pain that's deeper that i know i can't um just complain about um this path is a path i chose for myself two and a half years ago um i am living a much better life than i did from 2013 to 2018 when i had my surgery um, i wasn't really living um, i was existing and um so I'd like to be transparent because you know what? Everybody needs to know that when you are in a bad place, you're not the only one. And it's very easy for us to get caught up in social media and say, oh gosh, look at so-and-so. She's doing this. Of course she's doing that. He's got that going on. Why can't this happen for me? The problem is with social media, and I'll say it a thousand times if I haven't said it at least once, is that no one shows you the bad parts because whether they don't want to show that because that's you know maybe humiliating or embarrassing to them falling on their face or trying something new or um they just they think that it's better for people to see the end result and maybe they don't want to hear people saying oh, i'm so sorry you're hurting you know and that's not the reason why i ever say i'm hurting right now i'm dealing with um, my new socket i've had it for about four weeks now it's getting better and I'm actually getting it on the right way, which is a huge plus. But um, I'm still dealing with certain things. I got bone at the bottom that's just hitting every time I step. Now, why am I here at Young Life Camp in Williams, Arizona, doing a podcast in the quiet, beautiful, serene, peaceful camp and talking about phantom pain? Well, I'm titling this podcast Abracadabra. Whether or not I gel with that, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna tell you what I think. And I've had, I had the whole drive up here, which is 
I don't know, about two and a half hours from my home to get up here. So it's a great drive, listen to some music, and really kind of think about how I wanted to um, bring this phantom pain issue to a head here. But it, I think it will also serve other people dealing with other issues. Why I said abracadabra, because it's like a magic trick. <laughs> what I have found out about myself, and this may not go for everybody, but I'm gonna enlighten you on me and my personality and what I go through. I have phantom pain every day. It's never not there. Right now, as I'm speaking to you, I feel like my middle toes that aren't there are just tingling fiercely. Like, like I'm, like I'm sh like on a nerve and I can't, I can't get it to stop. And I shift and I try. Sometimes it'll fade a little bit, but it's always kind of a low vibration that after a while gets really, really annoying and, and thus painful. It's, it's more of a, I, I guess, a mental pain, a physiological pain versus physical. Like, obviously there's nothing there that can be hurting, but the nerves are sending signals that I'm, I'm sitting on a nerve that's putting my foot to sleep, which is really interesting for those of you that aren't amputees, because when I get up from doing this podcast, <laughs> I will have a hard time walking just like you would if your foot fell asleep and you had to get up and stand. You know how it's like you feel wobbly. I will feel the same way like my foot's not there, even though mine's metal and plastic. Go figure. So why am I here and talking about this? And I'll tell you what, what I have found out is some certainties in my life since I became an amputee. One, talking about your pain does not make it go away. It just actually exacerbates it. For me, it does. And I've had doctors say, yeah, you probably shouldn't express your pain so much. Like my first four weeks were undeniably the worst four weeks ever as an amputee. The phantom pain was through the roof. But one of those physical therapists that actually came to my house and tried to do different therapies with me said, don't talk about it. The more you talk about it, the more it, it's lived through you. Which is really hard because then you stop talking about it and your family thinks you're doing well. And you're really just like, it hurts. It hurts so bad. And you just don't want to talk about it. The other certainty for me is that pain medications do not help. I have tried them. I actually even have in my lower back here under my skin implanted in me from prior to amputation, uh, dorsal root ganglion, DRG for short, neurotransmitter is underneath my skin. And I have a, an iPod that actually activates it and can ri raise the stimula stimulation or lower it. Kind of like the pads they'd put on my knee when I was dealing with pain and they would send pulses through my knee to kind of help with it. This is implanted semi-permanently. I guess I could take it out if I wanted to. And I will tell you right now that that was causing more problems than good after my amputation, which shouldn't have. It was probably too high, but I got um, really burned by it. Not literally. Um, I thought it was doing good, so I kept it on. And then I went for an MRI for the neuroma I had in December. And when they turned it off for the MRI and then turned it back on, it completely sent my phantom pain skyrocketing and it freaked me out and I was in so much pain for like four solid weeks. So one of the guys uh, at the pain doctor's office said, turn it off, turn it off. Let's see what happens if you're, for at least a week. And you know what? That was in November, December. I haven't turned it back on, but I have this huge thing and sticking out of the back of me, which is just, I hate it. If I put a swimsuit on, you can totally see it. Um, it's about like this big and it sticks out of my skin probably about an, three quarters of an inch deep. So I get caught on chairs like this. Yeah, it's really awesome when you sit back and then you come up and it's stuck. So I'm thinking about getting rid of it. Not sure. But I'm going to tell you right now that was used for pain management prior to surgery. And I was told that it was a great pain management for amputation. It did not help me. I also was on gabapentin and all these other things did not help me. I have, I take no pain meds. I take nothing. I don't use any external things. I don't use any lotions. I don't, nothing. But I have found one thing 
with 100% certainty that has worked for me. And maybe it'll help you. The problem is it takes a lot of energy. <laughs> It takes a lot, a lot of energy, and I'm a type A person. If you don't know that about me, you should be watching my 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 blog, my podcast, or my Instagram, because if I'm not doing something, you might think that I've fallen off the face of the earth or died, because there's always something happening. I find that when I stay totally, totally busy, like extreme busy, no time to think, practically no time to eat, that I don't, I don't, um, I don't contemplate the pain. I don't feel the pain. I don't focus on the pain. Now that's a tall order because some of you might not have a lot of options of movement and moving around. But if you can figure out how to keep your brain active, then you're going to win that battle. I guarantee it. And I see so many people on social media asking, what does everybody take for their phantom pain? What is it? You know what? Again, there's no normal with this. What I go through and what you go through are totally different, but I do want to tell you what has helped me. And being a type A personality is definitely a godsend. Now, I bring this up in this gorgeous, gorgeous place that I get to be at for this next four days. You might call me crazy. I've done it for six years and I love being here. Not only is the location gorgeous and the people that work here, the Young Life Camp people are beyond amazing individuals. I get to fill my bucket. And what I mean by that, and this is where I'm going into my faith people, because this is me. My faith is what got me through all the years of pain and tragedy with my leg without delving into depression and you know no suicidal thoughts and things like that it was my faith it was my faith that drove my mind and my heart to saying that i can do this and i know that god's got me it was my faith that got me up in the morning with a smile on my face the day i knew my leg was going to be cut off and it was my faith that woke me the next moment knowing that I had done it, there was no reversing it, no growing back a limb, and this was my new life, and I knew I could do it with God's help. Plain and simple. Now, go back six years. When I started doing this, I had been injured, and I was literally being yelled at by other volunteers to stop working and sit in ice after we'd served our kids. Because we come up here to serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner for several days in a row. We set up the tables, we serve the food, we clean up the tables, and we do the new setup for the next meal. And we just do that. It's exhaustive work. It's muscle. It's movement. It's, I mean, we're talking 10 to 20,000 steps a day kind of days. And when you have knee issues, it's long. But I will tell you, the very first time I came here and I was in the middle of all that and I had some amazing volunteers here, other parents who told me, please sit, here's a nice bag, sit. That is so hard for me to watch other people work when I came to work and I don't want to be a burden. But I occasionally listen, not often. But that first trip, I went down to that building. You see that white building right there? That building is where they do worship. Now I come from a very traditional Presbyterian background where basically you're preached at, you listen to a sermon, you sing the traditional hymns, and then you go on your way for the week. I'd never seen a sermon like this for contemporary Bible study kind of, or Bible church type of sermon. I don't think I could have told you any clearer, but I was in tears watching the kids sing praises and worship band playing and hugging boys and girls, uh, football players getting together to talk about home life and things they were struggling with and opening up to each other and bonding. It gives me goosebumps just thinking about it right now. And I knew at that point in time, I was hooked at coming up here every year, volunteering and everything. And when I left that first year, my life was turned upside down. And that was the moment when I knew that there was a bigger plan for me and I had to trust in God. And 
Some of you may not believe in it. Some of you may be interested in this. And some of you probably have a really solid faith already and good for you. I don't know where I would be emotionally or mentally if I didn't have it. And now here I am six years later, the last three years I've actually been the coordinator of all the volunteers, talking it up and wishing upon wish upon wish that people didn't miss the opportunity to have their lives transformed up here to serve their kids, to show their kids that they are capable of serving their friends and them and their, the, the teachers that they have. And I, I, I just know, I know what Friday will bring when everything is said and done and we sit back and we go, wow, what a week. Yes, I will feel pain. Yes, I will probably have like a humming, buzzing feeling through my foot that's not there and I will be struggling. But there is nothing in this world that compares to serving one another out of love through hardship. You come out on the other side better for it. Your character has been refined a little bit more. You will find that you can't get enough serving time in and you realize that when you serve you might be filling other people's buckets by serving them with a smile and with love in your heart and it is very apparent when there's love but you will also realize selfishly that you are filled to the brim and over with all the blessings that come with just letting down your guard smiling serving and I'll tell you what you will never have earned the sores and the tiredness and the sleep deprivation more so than at this trip and you won't even be phased by it because you're gonna be so excited now I know that most of you watching this don't maybe know what young life camp is check it out you need to look just log online go Google search young life but there are other places to serve. There are so many people that are in need of servitude. And I don't know what says serving with an open, loving heart and open arms more than serving through your own issues. It has helped me heal inside, up in here. It's helped me heal physically. I've had to grow stronger. I've met some amazing people that then become support people for me as well. And I get to support them. When we leave here, these families are, are my dearest friends. And then I have grown that friendship group as they've rotated through new to old, new to old and everything. And it's, there's no, nothing that you can compare serving with others and what it can do for you, especially if you're struggling. So I say abracadabra, like it's a magic trick. How do I get through the pain? I don't take anything. I don't wanna ever be on anything ever again for pain. I've been there, I spent seven years getting prescriptions and I don't want it, I don't need it. This is a mind over matter, it's a heart issue, it's a mental issue, you can do it. Yes, of course there are some things, like if you just had surgery, you're gonna need something to handle that kind of pain. But when I talk about like this kind of physical pain, this, or this phantom pain, I know this is the rest of my life. I have to figure out how to deal with it long term. And prescriptions are gonna do nothing but harm my internal organs over time. So I choose my fate. I choose to look up and bend on my knees. And when I have to, I'm on my knees a lot. I have to choose to trust the path that was given to me. The path that I thought I was choosing for myself would already been chosen for me. I truly believe that with all my heart. I hope this resonates with you. I hope this can help you understand that there are gonna be some things you need to see long-term. I know that no matter what, I have to make do with where I'm at. If it feels better in a year or two, awesome. But if it doesn't, how am I coping now to deal with two, five, 20 years down the road? When I'm a 70 year old lady, how am I gonna handle phantom pain? 
If I'm still relying on a prescription drug, I can guarantee you after all the years I did prescription drugs and opioids, your body becomes accustomed to it. And then they start to have the effects and you don't want that. So I come here, you hear the big crows here. These things are huge. This thing flying at me. I think they might actually be here for me. I think they maybe think I'm dinner. I got two of them up there watching me. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You can go find dinner somewhere else. But in all seriousness, um, for those of you that are watching and you actually go to our son's school, you go to my son's school, I wish you were up here. I really do. And if you have years still ahead of you where you'll have kids in the high school, you need to make a plan to come up once and feed your soul while you help others feed theirs. It is, I think it is the greatest gift ever that I have ever given to anybody. And I would do it in a heartbeat again. And I am excited for this week. And in the same same moment, I am so sad that another beautiful thing has come to an end. Or is coming to an end. And it will be my turn to pass the torch and move on. But I do know something. I have learned a lot about myself through this kind of quiet time. I've learned a lot about myself on how I serve. In the last three years, I've learned a lot about myself on how I lead. And remember that every year I've been here, I've been injured. One year I came with crutches right after surgery. <laughs> My husband didn't think I should be here, but I was not missing it. Another year, talk about humbling and type A people and a perfectionist. I don't like asking for help. One year I came up here in a wheelchair and I think I actually worked the screen in worship, which I'd never done. So I became like Miss IT techie girl. Um, then I had to have someone wheel me literally from place to place. I felt so bad that I had, because the wheelchair I had wasn't the kind that you can do yourself. And there's some pretty steep hills here. And I think my husband once came up here to serve and I was afraid he was gonna let me kind of go down the hill here. Um, but that's, that's unique, putting your trust in other people, which is also a growing moment for me. Um, one year, my poor bunk mates. So the, the, the moms have two rooms downstairs and the dads have two rooms upstairs. And in there, it's like, like literally it's like summer camp there are bunk beds there's like six bunk beds in a room so women are up on top and on bottom and with one year when I had just had knee replacement surgery I was still on the orders to spend all night on one of those machines where you strap your leg in it's this big huge bulky machine it takes up half a twin bed and these are twin beds and you strap your leg in you turn it on and it bends your leg up and down and up and down to keep motion going so that scarring wouldn't happen. And I had to do that. I brought that silly machine up here and did it. I lay down in bed, strap it on, and I put it on all night long. I slept on my back with that machine going. <laughs> so there were women that actually watched me have to go through that. And then I think it was the year after that that I came and said, well, in a couple of months, I'm having an amputation. And then the year after that, I came as an amputee for the first time and, you know, trying to serve food and walk around this entire huge campus um, was very trying at times. And, um, you know, it, 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 it has shaped me in every sense of, of the word. I have grown in six years and I think it's ironic that we come here to serve so that the kids can grow spiritually and in their walk with God. And I feel like I unknowingly became a part of that. And I have grown in my faith. I have grown in my strength. I have grown in my character. Um, God has broken me down. He has, and he has built me back up to what he needs and wants in my life. And, um, and we have a helicopter going over. I told you, this is unedited. This is real as it gets. We'll just wait for that to pass for a second. 
so anyways, I know that this, um, this talk is not about a quick fix. It isn't. Um, it is true about phantom pain for those of you that aren't experiencing it because you're not an amputee or for those of you who are and maybe you're going through a great time right now. Uh, God love you for not having phantom pain. Um, I have been through all levels of it, times where there was no sleep at all, all night long. And I'll tell you what, that, that really tries you as a parent and as a wife to be a good person the next day when you are lacking sleep, um, especially when it's lacking sleep because of pain. And the great part is, is those nights, the pain didn't go away when I got up and started moving. A lot of times for me, and I will give you this hint too, some of you don't want to put your leg on because the phantom pain hurts. I get it. I am so there right with you. There's times I wake up and think, yep, I'm going to put it on. I'm going to hit that spot and I'm going to have to deal with it. And I say to myself, suck it up, buttercup. You're going to deal with it. And most of the time, I would say 90% of the time, it actually makes me feel better. I actually do better with phantom pain with my leg on and moving. The sitting sometimes is hard for me. Like I tell you, my foot is still totally aching right now and throbbing with um, what feels like, um, like, my, like my foot's falling asleep. Um, but I don't use anything. I don't use any external things to help me through pain. I use my faith. I keep my brain active, I keep my body moving, I put my leg on and I deal with what I need to deal with. And and truly, I have come to realize, and there have been some walks the last couple of weeks with this new socket, and I said, what if this is as good as it gets? Okay, I can do one of two things with that, that question. I can break down and go, oh my gosh, what have I done? What if this is as good as it gets? I can't live with this. And that negativism, that lack of positivity, that negative self-talk, which I talked about a couple weeks ago, is a recipe for doom. You, you can't. You cannot talk like that. So then what's the other side of that? What if this is as good as it gets? Okay, if this is as good as it gets, how do you cope? Because if this is how it will be, for, until I die, and for the next however many years, whatever God allows me to live out, how will I use this positively to make the most of my life so I'm living my best life, not cowering from it, not afraid of it? Those are huge questions, right? Those are soul-searching questions. Those aren't, hey, I'm in the drive through at the coffee line. What am I going to do if this is it? Oh, yeah, I'll take a latte and move on with your day. This is, find some place to escape. Even if it's your backyard where no one's at. If it's your bedroom. And ladies, sometimes it's the bathroom with the door shut. But whatever it takes, figure it out. You deserve that much. And I know that God loves you. And he has a greater plan for you than what you're going through right now. I believe that with all my heart. I have seen it in action in my life and with some of the people around me. And I get here on this campus and my heart is filled with so much joy right now. This is the best thing in the world to serve others, to love to find happiness and joy amidst the pain. I hope you find that place. I hope you realize that your happiness, your living your best life is probably not going to come in pill form. And if you ever need to talk, I would be here. As always, I would be here. I think this week I'm going to wrap up with your call to action. And I've already kind of stated it. You need to have a really good talk with yourself. And tell yourself, what if this is as good as it gets? And then the hardest part. Find the best way to make the best of your situation. What are you called to do with your life? You're not where you're at by accident. Even if it was an accident. 
Everything happens for a reason. I truly believe it. I live it every day. And when I look back, you know how they say hindsight is amazing and it's 2020. Everything that happened in the seven, six years prior to my amputation, I can see God's footprints working and his hand in everything. And that's when I have to let go and say, you know what? Stop being self-centered. You're not in control. Let it go and move forward because there is something amazing out there for you. And even when I came in a wheelchair in crutch, with crutches and a knee brace and amputation, I have never been let down by my ability to serve. It always amazes me how much energy I've been given. The amount of friends I have made and the connections that I hold in my heart and will forever. And the love that is spread over this campus for the next three days with high school students loving on each other, it is awe-inspiring and it stops me in my tracks how can I not look up and see something greater? I hope this resonates with somebody. I hope you see the beauty in your life and what you are meant to do. You have a purpose. You are so loved. Don't give up. Keep pushing forward. Baby steps count. And even if you have to go backwards occasionally, that's okay too. We all do. We stumble, we fall, we pick ourselves back up. You can do this. I know you can. And as always, be healthy, be happy, and be you. Until next time. Bye guys.